around to Prissy's office. No, actually, she's not available, but I'll leave word. Okay, thanks, bye. <clears throat> Are you wearing the, Ch the Chanel boots? Yeah, I am. That is Emily Blunt in her breakout role as an assistant to Meryl Streep's Miranda Priestly in the 2006 classic, The Devil Wears Prada. That memorable performance earned Blunt a Golden Globe nomination for Best Supporting Actress. 17 years later, she's nominated in that category again at tonight's 81st Golden Globe Awards. This time for playing Kitty Oppenheimer, wife of the father of the atomic bomb, in the Christopher Nolan epic Oppenheimer. Blunt's nomination is one of eight for the movie at the Globes, and the latest acclaim for the 40-year-old London native over her two decades of work, occasionally alongside her husband, John Krasinski. Emily and I got together in New York the other day for a Sunday sit-down. This is a national emergency. Nearly six months after the release of Oppenheimer, the movie's explosive success continues as it closes in on a billion dollars at the box office. Killian Murphy stars as J. Robert Oppenheimer with an all-star supporting cast that includes Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, and Emily Blunt. We don't let scientists bring their families. We'll never get the best. Blunt plays the other Oppenheimer, Robert's wife, Kitty. That's happening, isn't it? What has this ride been like for you to sit back because there was a strike and just watch it all happen? I feel like we're all still kind of awestruck by the reaction. Were you sort of talking to each other behind the scenes saying, wow, this thing's really taking off? Yeah. Yes. I mean, we were all on this chain. There's something called an Oppen Homies chain that... <laughs> So many wows and expletives and just like everyone just jaws on the floor when it came out and became like a runaway train. This is Oppenheimer. Did you have a Communist Party membership card? I'm, I'm not sure. Not sure. What was your initial reaction when Chris came to you and said, here's the character, Kitty Oppenheimer, wife of the man yeah. who created the A-bomb? and was haunted by it. I ran to meet him, and I remember him coming in afterwards after I'd finished reading, and, and I couldn't even form thoughts. To, I just said, I'm so emotional reading this script. It's just extraordinary. And what was it about Kitty that you fell in love with? She was just a rebel. There was just a refusal to contort herself into being the housewife ideal, and, I mean, he was her fourth husband, and she was 29. It sort of tells you what you need to know about that, and... The two of them meeting, it was like two comets coming together. Wake up! It is Strauss! It's always been Strauss, and you know it! Why won't you fight him? There are people who are talking about your performance in a way that could win awards next year. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> Is that? Do you see me like very? Is that like for the for the British? That is like. Oh, I like to make know. my guests deeply uncomfortable. Good, good, you so did, you did. Is that significant to you? Is it important to you? How does that sound? I find it deeply moving. It means so much to me that people talk about me in that way. You don't set out to elicit that reaction. I love the work so much. I'm in love with this job. I'm in love with this movie. And if people are talking about me in that way, I'm so thrilled. People were talking about Oppenheimer long before its highly anticipated release last summer. The film was one half of a pop cultural phenomenon movie fans dubbed Barbenheimer, a blockbuster weekend at the box office that had Oppenheimer sharing a marquee with Greta Gerwig's Barbie. To be part of a movement like that, that was so unexpected, I think, for any of us, it was a celebration. It didn't mean that one was pitted against the other. I hadn't realized how much of a moment we were a part of until just because of the strike, I never got to see it with an audience. We managed to get two tickets to an IMAX in Nyack, New York, in a shopping mall in, at a 4, 4 p.m. screening, like opening weekend. We were like, we're going. You and John? Yeah. And we snuck in the back when it went dark, and I saw a group of boys coming in dressed as Oppenheimer. Come on. At 4 p.m. in Nyack, with, like, pipes dangling out of their mouths. <laughs> <laughs> it was just... And I just was 
I got goosebumps. I still get chills thinking about it. And wow. I called Killian afterwards. I was like, this is more than a movie. This is more than a movie. This is a movement. In her next movie, Blunt stars with Ken himself. So how have you been? God, I hate that thumbs up stuff, guy stuff. Mom to a pair of daughters with husband John Krasinski, Blunt will share the screen with Ryan Gosling this spring in The Fall Guy, an action comedy about a retired stuntman who gets his moment to be the hero. I'm not the hero, I'm just the double. Not today, you're not. Let's talk about the other side of Bar 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 Barbenheimer. Well done, he Excuse does. Excuse me, <laughs> blew that line. <laughs> You've seen it a couple of times, yeah. I understand. Yeah, well, we have little girls. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. Quote it. They, they play the soundtrack. Love it. Are they happy that you've now worked with Ryan Gosling then They're for The Fall Guy? They're so happy. They have never had any interest in anyone I've worked with ever. They know a lot of people I've worked with, but Ryan is... Ryan's it for he them. finally did it, Mom. They love Ken. Yeah, they were like, what does he look like when he has normal hair? What happened to your face? You look terrible. You look amazing. What's crazy to me is that we're talking about The Fall Guy and we're talking about Oppenheimer. And yet, this is the year you allegedly took off and slowed yeah. down a little bit. Yeah, well, I, I mean, you, being I on a movie set, you right. know, I was ready to take a break from being on a movie right. set for a little bit. And what brought that on? Just family time? Yeah, just, I guess everyone needs to take a breather sometimes. And I love a nap. Oh, are you a napper? I'm a napper. Mid I do, um... I do transcendental <laughs> meditation, but I don't think I do it right, because you're supposed to sit up and do it like this, and I just am horizontal and I snore throughout it. I was like, I don't know if I'm doing it right, but it's very relaxing. So that's not meditation, that's sleeping. It's just sleeping, really. <laughs> and when, whenever I'm on a film set, if I've got some kind of fancy period hairdo or... I will literally sleep sitting up like a psychopath. Like, <laughs> people I work with call them my psycho naps. Now, we're talking about family. I mentioned that there had been some input from some viewers to the show. This is from John Kay. Would you rather go on a lovely date night with your husband, restaurant of your choosing, or stay home and watch the Great British Bake Off? <laughs> I'm gonna just get this wrong. I would much prefer to go on a lovely date night with my husband. Yes. No, he knows, he knows. I'm obsessed with the Great British Bake Off. And you know what? There's always time in the day for that. So between the naps... Between the naps, the school run, and date night... We put it all together. I will be mainlining the Great British Bake Off <laughs> into my veins. Our big thanks for the submission from loyal viewer John Kay, a promising actor and director himself, we're told. Our thanks to The Seville as well in New York for hosting my conversation with John's wife, Emily. If you haven't seen it yet, Oppenheimer is streaming now. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full extended interview with Emily Blunt. There's a lot more in there. You can find it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.